Hello, and welcome to After the Coffee. And this time, I've got no coffee. On Monday, I talked about instilling competence to your team members. And in retrospect of my 30 years of experience in leadership roles, nothing has been more fulfilling to me than instilling in my team members confidence in their ability to accomplish things that they were, well, initially apprehensive. Some people are waiting for permission and some people are just unsure. And all it takes is a leader to pull them aside and sit down with them and say, I believe in you. This happened to me early in my career, before I had any desire to become a leader, you know, I was just a worker. And my leader pulled me aside and said, look, I've got a big project and I want you to run it. I want you to lead the project for me. And I was like, oh, man, a project. It just seems so big in my mind. And, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to you know, pull it off. And so I was scared. But after he sat me down and said, look, you got this. You do. You've done this and this and this and you do it well. Uh, I really think that you can pull this off. Now, look, if you run into any problems or you have concerns, my door is open. You see, by by instilling confidence in our people, we give them permission to go beyond where they are right now, to expand and learn what they're capable of. Now, you benefit as a leader because these are important things that need to be done, but simply you don't have the time. And so is it risky? Maybe a little bit. As long as you keep communication lines open with the individuals on your team, I don't think it's as big of a risk. It's a stretch and we need to stretch because if we don't stretch, we don't grow. And if they don't stretch, they don't grow. So this is why it's so important as a leader to instill confidence in your people and acknowledge when they do something well and say, hey, look, I've got something else that I want you to do. And it may be out of your comfort zone. But see, the thing is, is if we stay within our comfort zone, we don't experience growth. And if we allow people to move outside their comfort zone, they discover new skills that they enjoy. They may not even know that they had. We grow them, stretch their brain muscle, and there are other skills, right? Because like me as a project manager, I needed to exercise my communication skills. I had to learn how to deal effectively with conflict and try to create an environment where conflict was not, uh, you know, butting heads. Like I've said before in the past, I created a conversation around it. And I learned a lot from those people who I had those conversations with because either I had it wrong or there was a better way than the way that I had in my own head. But there was so much benefit for everyone when we instill confidence in people it kind of brings that love back to work when you feel like you don't matter. And there's a lot of people out there right now in their jobs that feel like they don't matter. For you to instill in them confidence and, and get them to believe that they do matter, that they can make a difference, but they have to be provided that opportunity especially now with the new workforce that's coming in, many of them that I'm working with are, are timid, um, they're sensitive, they're fearful. And so we need to, you know, give them an understanding that they can do this, they've got this, and they are not going it alone, that we will be behind them 
when they need us to bounce ideas off of, to help troubleshoot problems, that's what we're there for. But if we're not growing our people, then we're not growing our company. We're not growing our business. And we're not growing within our communities that we serve. So instilling confidence in employees is a perfect way to get them excited about what is possible and continually developing them, developing their skills, bringing them to the next level. And that's why it's so important that we take the time to instill confidence in our team members. And I know there are a handful of people there that, well, we have some concerns over. We're not sure that they're ready for you know, more responsibility or taking on something new. But we won't know until we try. And we won't grow until we try. We've got to take those risks, let them know, hey, look, whenever you, if you run into anything or let's talk, you know, sometimes my leader that I had that I referred to, who pulled me aside and sat me down, said, look, we're going to meet twice a week. I want to meet on Tuesdays and I want to meet on Fridays. And I would just want you to tell me what's going on, share with me your progress. And in the meantime, if you run into any problems, come see me. We'll work through this together. So that, that grew me incredibly. And I felt very honored to be able to take on this responsibility. I worked harder because I didn't want to fail. <laughs> you know, I wanted to make him proud that I could take on more and that I, I wanted to grow. I wanted to learn more. Um, I was a sponge. I love to learn. I've always been a learner. I've always been that, ir I was that irritating kid that was constantly asking, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? I'm sure I drove some adults crazy. And I took that into my adult life. I was very inquisitive. I had so many jobs from the time I was, gosh, I think it was nine delivering papers, right? Newspapers. Boy, does that date me because we don't have papers anymore. But, uh, and then I worked at a service station. I worked in the Boys and Girls Club. I had the, all these jobs. I had people saying, what haven't you done? Well, I was learning and I, I was exploring, you know, what I wanted to do. I wanted to find that, that calling that I would recognize. It was a job that I knew when I was in it, I would be like, this is it. This is what I'm all about. And when I worked for Steelcase North America and I had the opportunity to be involved in uh, an employee involvement uh, program and, and do lots of training, they put me through certifications. That was it. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to learn so that I can teach others so that people can be successful. And it's extremely fulfilling, very fulfilling. So I want you to think about that. I know we're getting, you know, the holiday weekend is upon us and I hope you have a wonderful one. And then we've got that gap till New Year's and that'll be time for you to think about 2023. And look, whether you're a formal leader, an informal leader, an emerging leader, or just a friend, these are things that you can do to deepen and enrich and your relationships. And that's really what this is all about. At the end of the day, when you boil it all down, business is about relationships. Money is a result. Money is a result of building good relationships with people, creating trust and creating excitement. Also, I just want you to know that next Monday, the day after the holiday weekend, I'm going to be talking about getting prepared for the new year. For 2023 and I've got all kinds of great things to share with you that will help prepare you for the new year and even though there are people out there with gloom and doom for 2023 I want you to know that this year is going to be what you want it to be what you will make it to be 
And with that being said, this is After the Coffee, and I will see you Monday. Hopefully, maybe you're out of the office. Tuesday, you'll catch me on the Monday Morning Cup of Joe. You take care. Spend this time with those you love and those who love you. And I wish you all the best. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.